God, he's given us the rewards for our lives. And I just don't want a box of Cracker Jacks. Amen? So if I got to preach to one or preach to a wall, I'm preaching. I'm preaching somewhere. Amen? Because I'm called to it. Amen? So think about this. When Lucifer saw you, he realized that God was given authority. So to, he didn't give me this authority. I mean, I was, I, I kept the seal. In other words, he sealed. What he was doing was that he was keeping him the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the realization or the revelation of God. He was sealing it for a time. That's why the angels are going to unseal certain things. This was what Lucifer was doing. He was, he sealed up the sum. Why? Because he had to, he, he, today, the reason why he messes with you is because he can't see God now, except for he sees it through you. Then the time passed, he was there, he could see God face to face, and now when he sees us, he sees God. When he sees us, he sees us. When he hears his, our, our words speaking, he sees that God is speaking through you. He knows the difference, and he knows the scripture better than you do. And he knows that the second that you know that he knows that you know that he knows, he knows that you know that you ain't got to put up with him. Huh? Eat this bread. No, man shall not live by. That's what he's waiting to hear out of us. We are the managers of the earth. We manage our lives more than anything else. We have been called before God to make a change in the earth by what he's given us. And the second I say, I am no good. I'm not even worth it. I can't do this. I don't get nothing out of the reading of the Bible. I don't get such and such and such. Satan says, that's good. Why? Because if you knew what I knew, the second you know what I know, I know I have no more power. I have no more power. None. Amen? Somebody give Jesus a hand clap for that. You and I are his image. And Lucifer saw that. And when God cut him off, that's why when he goes back up to heaven in the book of Job, and he says, where have you been? He says, to and fro in all the earth, seeking whom I may devour. Who's going to let me devour them? I will. Why? Because I know that they have power to make change on the earth, and I don't. I can make that person hate that person. <laughs> I know I don't have the power. I can't touch him, but he can. So I'll put it in him to do it. And as soon as you see that person, they're getting frowned up in their face, ready to just do battle. That's what's going on in the world today. But if men knew the power of God and the power that they have to make change in the earth, Satan will never have another chance to rule. Amen. So God created you. <laughs> he chose everything about you. He chose how you would look, where you would live, what you would hear. God did all of that so that he, that so we will be without excuse, but so that you will know who you are. Knowing who you are really does something. It changes the way you think, act, and talk. Remember I told you about the little queen, the, the child, was, uh, the, the, the little prince was sitting in the chair. I oh, will say the princess this time was sitting in the chair and she kept slouching down. And the queen said, no, nope, you need to sit up. And a few minutes later, she'll slouch back down. She said, no, you need to sit up. And the next time she called her doing it, she said, you need to sit up. Do you know who you are? In other words, there's a certain posture that you have to always have. You, your practice of it will become something that will be in life. I was always use the illustration how Pastor Val was just sit for the whole service. I mean, just as royal, straight as... And why? Because that's something that has now become a habit. So I'm not even thinking about it. Now, I even got it to, at the beginning. Y'all remember standing at parade rest? I mean, uh, uh, at attention? Trying to stand at attention all that time, man. Legs hurting. That's out. We're glad when this ceremony get over. I'm going to hurt somebody right now. I just want to pass out just so I can go to the back. I just pass out. You have people do that? We know the pass out is because we put them in the back because we know what they're going to do, right? Because they wouldn't want the domino effect. But they're sitting there. But after you do it for a while, you can't do that at West Point. Why? Because you're in a different academy. You pass out. You're passing out, packing up. And moving out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so it's a different thing. So it, the, what I'm saying to you is this. But when you learn your posture, when you learn who you are, when you understand the desire, do you understand that when you're following through what God has said, then and you're living your life, it's something that has become a way of life for you. So standing at attention no more is a thing. It's no, it's no longer the same thing. It becomes a discipline. And that discipline becomes a part of your life. And it becomes something that you do automatically. It's no problem. Amen? Hallelujah. 
So John 6, 316 says this, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? Because he loves you. So everybody will have eternal life and never ever perish. In other words, you're a masterpiece. You realize that you're a masterpiece. I'm getting ready to close here in about eight minutes and 50 seconds. Bear with me. Amen. <laughs> Hold on. We are a masterpiece. What is it about a masterpiece that is so amazing? First of all, being a masterpiece, you're not just kept anywhere. You realize that? A masterpiece of, of, of art that's um, maybe you have to travel to another country just, just to see that masterpiece. And not only does the masterpiece uh, say something when we look at it, but the masterpiece is kept in certain temperatures so it won't, won't mess up. It's got to be the right. Wait, especially if it's a painting. You got to keep it on certain canvas. You got you to preserve it. So it's being preserved. But something else is, is as a part to being a masterpiece. Not only are you one of a kind, it's guarded. It, you just don't leave a masterpiece anywhere. And can't anybody just get to it. And matter of fact, it costs something to get to the masterpiece most of the time to go and see it. Amen. And there's nothing, that's not, not another, uh, what is that, that, uh, uh, what's her name, Madonna, the, uh, the, the, the lady. Mona Lisa, you can make a copy of the Mona Lisa, but everybody knows it's not right. Why? Because the expert can see. See, Satan knows who's real. <laughs> he knows who's real. I've been to an art gallery, and for those who can understand art, man, I went to this art gallery, I was so bored in there. But the guy I was with was pointing out stuff I would have never stood there and saw on my own. See, pastors do that every day. And you so should you. There's some stuff that you just couldn't see on your own. You say, me, you what? You say, no, you look, it was some kind of thing. It was just a little pendulum. And it was hanging, a piece was hanging on top of it. I was like, okay, it's a pendulum hanging. What do you want me for? You say, do you see how it's hanging? Matter of fact, it's hanging in a way that it should not be able to do that. That, did he start, I started looking, I was like, what? Rule. I would look at it and I would say, I would have never saw that. Then it became interesting to me. And not only that, he began to point out different things as why to this was able to do that. You see, when we're telling you stuff, as when we're preaching and when you're talking to other people, I'm telling you what you can't see. And God says, I'll not show it to, to anybody until I first show it to my prophets. And even in Ephesians chapter 4, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, once that word is given to you, it's up to you now to become just like that. You are a minister in your own right. You may not be called to the office up here, but you're called to the office out there. You're called to the office in your home. You're called to, to be that expression of God continually so that men may know and see you. It's how you and I act that is very important to people seeing the things of God. So the last thing I want to show you is how God sees us. In Psalms chapter 139 and verse 14, I've said this so many times. The last thing I want you to get out of this is that not only are you called, but how does God see you? How does the, the president has elected you? Do you not know that you're saved because the, the president, God himself, wanted you saved? That you're in this church, in this church building, living for God today is because he called you to this. Not that you want, you could not go there yourself. To have his light. And he says this. I will praise you for I am what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows full well. My soul knows it full well. What? God says that. Listen. Nowhere in the Bible will you find fear associated with God. Mm-mm-mm. Nowhere in the Bible but man. Why? Because he knew he was getting ready to release something that cannot, whatever this man does, it's going to be done. My, my, my. Oh. And this is the last thing I want you to get. God did not just make you fearfully, but he gave you something 
that he didn't give to any of the creation as of yet until he gave it to man. He gave man a, a name. Everybody say name. You have a, a name. You have a name and your name associates a certain way someone may think about you when your name is said. Hmm. When you got your name, you got your name or you received your name from your parents. Matter of fact, you realize it was your name even before you can understand a whole lot of other stuff by the virtue of somebody calling you and say, hey, hey, your name, come here. And you're sitting there, you may not you have got it too much, you didn't heard it enough, say, you know, I don't understand what that name means, but I know when I hear that name, they talking to me. Now, how George Farmer did it, all them Georges, I don't know. <laughs> he got five George, George this, George that, George, I guess the middle name or so, I don't know. But the thing about it was this, when you have a name, your name is associated with such and such. You know, you, everybody had a, a pookie or, or somebody was crazy in their family, they would say Uncle Jojo or, or something like that, and you're like, oh, yeah, he coming? Because he coming, I'm moving on that side of the, you know what I'm saying? You got your name, when your name is said, it starts, it, it, it brings a thought out in your mind. It is a name. Well, with God thinking some things about us, that's so much that in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 17, God says, listen, look, your mother gave you your name, but you're getting ready to get a name from me. And nobody's going to know this name, and I'm going to tell you why they don't know it. Here it goes. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Oh, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a what? White stone. And on the stone, no stone, a new name written which no one knows except him who received it. Now, you don't understand what we're getting ready to happen here. I almost want to get up and run right now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This is going to get some good stuff. I'm going to sit back just a little bit, okay? You go to heaven, and God getting ready to give you a name. And when God gives you that name, he's giving it to you on a stone. So when you receive your stone, you have this name and nobody knows what your name. And for the first time, you get to say, say my name, say my name. Amen. And you will be going around in heaven. What's your name? My name is Joe Baba Baba Dudu or something. Amen. I'm giving you a name that for the first time you get to say it. Why? Because right now it's a secret between us, but you're going to know your name full well and it will never change. It will have something to do 